Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this video series. Uh, please check the previous video I had with Satyaki Malik from India. Currently, he is a data science master student in TU Eindhoven, Netherlands. So we discussed about his background and how you can decide which kind of data science program you can choose in Europe. In this video, we will be focusing in details about his experience of doing a master's in TU Eindhoven data science till now. So. we can start with the first question maybe yeah. like yeah uh, how is the study load and ECTS uh, maybe we can go step by step so you can focus initially on the study load ECTS grading teaching experience and then we can go to the different parts of the study experience yeah sure uh, so study load I would say is is high I mean uh, ideally you are supposed to take uh, uh, three courses per quartile, so that's 15 ECTS ideally. And if you keep doing that consistently for two years, you will get 120 ECTS, which is the which is the goal to complete the masters. But you can also take more courses if 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 you can manage. It's up to you. Nobody will stop you. And uh, for 15 ECTS, you have to study 42 hours a week. I mean that's how TUE has designed its uh, curriculum. Uh, so it's like 12 hours per subject per week. And uh, yeah, actually it varies a lot uh, quartile wise and the subject wise where your study load will be higher. If you are really good in uh, deep learning, like you have done some courses before coming for a master's or you have some work experience, you will find few things easy. So for me, I found uh, deep learning courses quite easy. But uh, statistics courses, which is like a very important component of uh, data science, uh, I'm I'm not good at it because I haven't studied maths throughout my bachelor's and not much statistics either. And I just did it in high school. So I know very less about that. And they they get like the, the introductory class is like, oh, we know everything. And they, they pick up they pick the pace very fast. And before you know it, you cannot catch up. So those require a lot of effort. So I would say it's not consistent, but you can be wise while choosing your courses so that you distribute your study load properly and decide what to take and what not to take. But also the curriculum has uh, compulsory courses which you cannot avoid. So uh, so you, it's, it's more like how you plan your two years and where you place which uh, subject in what quartile. Right? That, that, that's uh, pretty much it. Also, uh, I like if you got in TUE, I think this is very relevant is uh, Q3 and Q4 has very nice courses. So I three this I say this Q1, Q2, it means uh, our full year is divided into quartiles and each quartile is two and a half months long. So the courses are uh, taught in eight weeks and then there are two weeks of exams. And that keeps repeating for uh, all the four quartiles. And after two and a half months or four chunks of that, that means 10 months, Two months is holidays, so July and August, uh, there is no study, uh, summer holidays. And uh, since it's four quartiles, so and there are some courses in some quartiles, Q3 and Q4 are uh, uh, have good courses because these are kind of basics. And then when you come lower, they build on this and it gets really interesting. So uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a good to know. Yeah. Okay. And, Okay, so what else? Maybe like, uh, yeah, yeah, I can go one by one, it's fine. So uh, I have mentioned many times that in Netherlands, whatever my experience was in TU Delft is that grading is very conservative. So what is your experience of the grading and how do you see it? Uh, I very much agree. Um, there is no part marking as such. Uh, every, like almost every line you write has uh, marks distribution and uh, the the rubric is designed very specifically so uh, it's not that okay this is that much good so you will get 50 percent of the score maybe not it, it, they, every teacher absolutely follows the rubric so if you mention miss point number four which is in the rubric which has the maximum weightage you get zero in that it's not that you mention others and that's why you get points so 
in that way if you are not accurate you will lose marks very fast and like for me initially i was thinking i will get pretty good score i might get a 9 or something but when the results came out i got a 7 because uh because i was not used to this way of scoring and it took me a while in q4 i kind of understood how how to do that do that okay so yeah so how is your experience of teaching uh, in ty and hoben at least in your first year i mean how the teachers are yeah so like uh, for example like how do they teach like the teaching approach do you do you find it something very useful or different as you had in india or uh, also like how they they uh, so for example if you say like sometimes i've seen like some teachers that teach only small concepts and they give you a lot of assignments and they want you to uh, invest more time they just give you like a overall outline but in some courses i have this experience in tudev and then they give you an idea and then you need to invest some time and go deep so they don't want to go deep with you but they give you like the surface and then you go deep so what is your experience of uh, the teaching till now what do you think okay uh a few things right yeah yeah so a few things so in in data engineering which is one of the course which i had in q4 uh in that um uh, so they taught they taught us spark and hadoop and map reduce uh on this i also have a plan to like launch a skill share course but yeah later on on that but anyway so so uh, they have this in data engineering and uh they they teach us the theoretical stuff and then there is a like project which uh, they want us to do by ourselves um and yeah as if if you have studied spark or towards uh, learned anything towards this you will know that there is not much theory in that you learn the most when you are actually doing the practical so in that sense we learned a lot when we did the project ourselves obviously you can ask them for help and there are practical sessions where you can discuss the questions uh, doubts which you have with your professor but um uh but yeah in, in that way they ensure that we learn and we did learn a lot in that that format but uh, in in uh, yeah so but in theory it was even in theory it was quite detailed it's not that they skipped some important bits and pieces so that we just figured out ourselves but we learned a lot in practical but in other courses like statistics or algorithms uh they go pretty in depth and uh, i really like the way most te- teachers teach obviously like everybody will not be very good uh, or equally efficient in teaching people but uh, i overall really liked uh, the quality of teaching here and the amount of knowledge uh, the teachers have because if you come with doubts they i mean you will get the exact answer you're looking for but uh in my previous experiences like if if the teachers don't know what they're talking about they will kind of like uh, avoid what you're asking and kind of take a different path and give some uh some answer which is not your question's answer which will get you more confused and then after two three times you will give up but that's not the case here people uh, teachers really know what they're talking about and they can give you really specific answers i mean uh, it's a lot to learn i mean they're really good i'm really happy okay okay good to know uh yeah so talking about the course curriculum uh, based on my experience i had like it was more research oriented by research i mean like sometimes some courses were not actually followed from the books when i did computer science it was more like based on last 10 year publication or something they combined it and made a presentation and that was more like the way the syllabus was constructed in tudel mm-hmm. so what is your experience about the course curriculum um i guess it's pretty much the same as you say uh, i followed a couple of bachelor's courses just to get my basics better and there i saw that they follow textbooks they say that okay 50% of what we teach are from this textbook but remaining 50% is what we think you should learn and how um we have figured out the uh, industry is going and talked to them and decided what you should you guys should know and uh, that's the case for bachelors but in masters i think uh 
so far in my 12 or 14 courses i did maybe one or two courses suggested a book and rest of it is pretty self uh, dependent in the sense you just follow their slides and uh, their their lectures and you are pretty good i mean you don't need books for that yeah okay and do you did you also have like a uh, study i mean when you do the courses sometimes there are group projects so what was your experience like uh, do you think it helped like when you do group projects with different nationalities cultures and everything what benefit or what was your thought process or outlook towards it yeah so uh, i am pretty like quite open to knowing new cultures and knowing new people like i try to keep my groups as diverse as possible and always try to do that like even my in my friendship groups or any kind of group or association i'm, I'm with so i really enjoyed the aspect of uh, like interacting with uh, from 10 different people from 10 different countries and knowing their way of working and i generally found out like you will find things that are much better and i mostly found out that some most of their way of working is better than mine so i learned a lot from them and i try to follow similar uh, procedures uh, so i really enjoyed that uh, the the qualm i have in this is because every quartile is uh, what do you call it like independent uh, so no one is asking you to follow the same exact curriculum so every two and a half months your your peer group changes so it's very hard to form a consolidated group of friends wh whom with whom you always make a, a team and work so it is repeatedly building that chemistry with new groups in every quartile in every subject because almost 90% of the subjects had group assignments uh, so far so it's it's running that chain again and again so that can make you tiresome because you might work very well with one group but in another group you might have issues uh, adjusting with uh, some people which obviously it has to happen you cannot avoid it uh, so uh, so that that's the only qualm i have but uh, apart from that i really enjoyed uh, the international aspect of it yeah okay i i think you very nicely put the both the sides of doing group work and uh, yeah so let's move to the next uh, point the final point of the study experience uh, do you have any specific study groups or associations like for example who organize cultural activities or maybe some kind of uh, joint coffee or going somewhere study abroad something or like oh. any kind of groups oh, or associations so, yeah so this is huge actually in theory uh, there are cultural associations and there are study associations i think and and there are sports associations there, there are three groups and sports association is huge i think there are 41 associations and the campus also have has lots of games so i mean if you are really into sports you can like you can do so much stuff but generally the course load is so high you cannot really like can get involved if you're doing a bachelor's you're lucky because you have more time uh in masters is quite loaded so but we have three sectors of associations uh in cultural we have drama like all the basic ones um, uh, dance and music and everything and you can obviously participate uh and in um, uh, in study associations there 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 are uh, two data science associations uh one computer science association and there is one association for every uh, uh, so, so, so study uh, stream or major you can you can think of but i really didn't find any of the study association very useful because they do have meetings and uh, where they talk like general meetings where they decide uh, who will be the chair and who will be the treasurer these kind of things which are kind of not useful in a in an academic academic perspective uh, they do arrange some industry visits uh, sometimes but i haven't found anything so far as useful this is the uh, denbosch masters which i was talking about that they do and there is another data uh, data science association which i did know very less about i never was a member of it uh, so i cannot really tell if they are good or bad but i heard they they do hackathons and you can 
if you are interested you can you can um, involve in that in the in the there is a like a mother uh, group which is the computer science one uh, in associations which manage i i guess they are somehow related with this uh, for any kind of previous year question papers or uh, solutions uh, this this group is a good place to start and they also sell books in a discounted range um, discounted prices and i think sell notes as well so that's helpful but i personally never use any of the study association group features but i am really active on the sports association groups yeah okay yeah so it depends on your personal choice and preference and uh, we can leave the names of these groups in the description below so that you can have a look like uh, or maybe the link of the website where you can find those groups yeah yeah and uh, and also if you are wondering like how you are going to contact satyaki so i will also leave his contact details in the description below and also he has a youtube channel where he publishes very nice videos so you can see it flashing on the screen and we'll also leave the description below so that you can follow his channel subscribe to his channel and uh, uh, support him in sharing the information what he is doing he has made a very nice scholarship video which we are going to talk about later in the interview uh, so yeah. I yeah. would add, I I also write on Medium, so you guys can follow me there as well. So I okay. I, I try to put one article a week. Sometimes it, I miss it, but yeah, I try to maintain a good uh, standard. And so I I put a lot of my experiences here with housing and masters, and I started meditation a while back. So it has a mix of many things, but but yeah. And also data science. Anything related to data uh, science, or it's only so about life and living and. It I try to focus mostly about life and living there and okay. relationship stuffs as well, because okay. I, I kind of enjoy writing those downs and it really help uh, put my thoughts on on perspective. Uh, and there is a good news. So I got uh, approval from two publishers on Medium, and they oh. allow me to write in in their publication. So one is Data Driven Investor. Okay. So I also invest in Indian stock market. And you can find a lot of things. So yeah, moving on to the next. Part.